So welcome to day one. Uh, let's go over GitHub for a quick second, and then we're going to start setting up our machines. I'm aiming to finish by 1230, and I'm going to warn everyone ahead of time that the next 90 minutes are going to make literally no sense to you, and that's okay. I just want to get everything set up so that we don't, we can do spend one and a half hours on setup, installing all the software that we'll ever need for the rest of this course so that we never have to touch it again. This is the point where I want you to have your computers open. Most of the times I'm gonna have it be closed. And if you have any questions or if you're not seeing what we're seeing up here on the screen, um, then let me, Josh, or Shruti know right away. This is the time where you can ask a ton of questions and we won't be sorry because we just need to get these machines set up. So GitHub has this concept called organizations and we're under India Platoon. I've invited every single person to be part of this right over here. And if you're not able to see this particular screen, go to github.com slash India Platoon and accept my invitation. It also should be inside of your email. The way that the curriculum works is I'm gonna click on curriculum and it's broken down by weeks and by days. So we're here, on, we're, in, we're in week one right now. We're gonna click on this. It's broken down by day. So we're gonna click on five, six, because today is five, six. The first, the first set part of today, hopefully finished by 12.30, is just this computer setup. So please understand none of this is gonna make any sense, and that's totally okay. Number one, does every single person have an Apple ID and Xcode installed? It was a huge download, it's like three gigs. So if you don't have it, it's going to take forever and I'm gonna to have to work with you individually later. So who does not have it? Who does not have it set up? Everyone? Okay. Second, we're gonna to go to slack.com and we're gonna download this. You may have already downloaded this. If so, you can ignore it. I want you to click the white download button and not the download on Mac App Store. The reason I'm having you download it directly from the, the manufacturer is because you can share your screen with somebody else and allow ro remote control access. So let's say that you know Bobby is sick one day, he's working from home, but he wants to pair a program with me. He can, if he downloads it using this white link, I, he can share his screen with me and I can control his screen through my machine if he wants me to. It's only if he gives me permission to do that. If you download it from the App Store, obviously the App Store does not want people to be able to do that to your machine, so they don't allow that, that particular bit. Third, I want you to go and download Zoom. So Zoom is this, there's a green box on the, on the projector right here. It's what we're gonna use if you're absent for any reason, like. Uh, let's say your kid gets super sick and then you're not able to come into uh, class or anything, you can call in using Zoom. And that's, uh, that's our like premium video conferencing software. So go ahead and download that, go to here, and then just click download and walk through that install. I want you all to sign up for Operation Code. And then I want you to install these two particular pieces of software. So go over here, go to downloads, download this thing, unzip it. And the most important thing for anything that you download and install is I want you to drag it from wherever you installed it or unzipped it and drag it into applications. That's a very important thing. I don't want to do that because I already have it. By dragging it into applications, what you're doing is saying, at the root of my computer, I want to install this software. So I'm gonna pause for about five to 10 minutes, and I want you to do those five things. Download Slack, drag it into applications, download Zoom, drag it into applications, sign up for operation code, download iTerm, VS Code, and drag those into applications. I'm gonna pause the video right here. All right, so let's talk about what we've done so far. We have downloaded, uh, we have an Apple ID. So inside the Mac ecosystem, this is the way that they identify you for everything. Uh, so you do need an Apple ID in order to move forward. From there, you'll download what's called Xcode. So every single machine that ships out from Apple has the ability to become like a web development software engineering machine, but 99% of the world don't use it. 
So they just, I mean, most of the world just uses it for like Netflix and YouTube and email and banking and stuff like that. So they don't ship automatically with Xcode. The moment that you download Xcode, which is enormous, it turns your machine into a development machine. So it downloads all the packages directly from Apple that you need in order to make your machine work as a development machine. We're using Slack to communicate. When you get to your first job, nine times out of 10, you'll be using Slack. So getting familiar with it and the commands here will be very useful. Zoom, we're using for uh, video conferencing. It allows you know, tons of people onto one place at one time. Uh, it's, you can control other people's screens. You can you know, share screens. You can record things. That's what we're using right now. So that not on the recording, but you'll see this, this little green box around. I'm sharing this screen and I'm recording this particular screen as well. Operation Code is a national organization that tries to get military vets and their families inside of tech. So I, that's why we're signing up for it over here. You'll get emails, you can join their Slack channel. Uh, they have job postings. If you have any technical questions, you can ask them as well. They're very familiar with us and vice versa. iTerm and VS Code, we'll talk about more in detail this afternoon. But essentially, this, group, this is a place where you can interact with your, term, your computer in a non GUI way, graphical user interface. So I'm not double clicking. I can just I can use this terminal to you know execute commands and run programs. And VS Code is going to be your the place that you're going to write most of your code. It's called a text editor. And you've used text editors before. If you've ever written a paper, you've used Microsoft Word, Google Sheets, Pages. Those are all examples of text editors. But they all have things built in like fonts and bolding and colors and stuff. So that as a text editor is really good for writing papers, but really bad for writing code. VS Code is the one that we're going to be using for writing code. There's also Sublime. There's also Atom. There's also Vim and Emacs. Most of the industry is moving towards Visual Studio Code. Sorry, Shufi. Uh, they're not using Sublime anymore. So that's what we're going to be teaching in this class as well. But we'll go into more detail this afternoon. I'm assuming at this point that everyone has done everything. And please, like, I, for this, I implore you not to be like, oh, I don't want to raise my hand and seem like I, it's, like, it seems stupid. Like, this is the perfect time to raise your hand and say, like, we need help, and one of us will work with you. Now, there's a link on here called Complete Install Fest. So if you did all this in order, go ahead and click on Install Fest. We're going to install a bunch of software on our computer that we need to write code. We're gonna do everything in order and I'm gonna do one thing at a time. So the first thing I want you to do is install the code command. So this is a command that allows you to open things within your terminal uh, very, very quickly. So go ahead and click on this link and follow all the instructions up to and including restart the terminal. I'm gonna click on this link. Follow every single thing until you see restart the terminal. So launch VS Code. I think it's shift command P and type in shell command, press enter, and then restart the terminal. You should be able to do this. The final result of this is that when I do, when I go into my VS. When I open up my iTerm like this and I just type in the word code and I press enter, VS Code will pop up. So that is what you should end up being able to do. So again, just to repeat before I pause the recording, we're just doing number one. We're going to click on this link, run this command, this command, and this command. When you're done with this and you're able to open up iTerm and type in code and then a window shows up, you're good to go and call us over when that's ready. There we go. All right, we're gonna continue on here. Uh, we're making good time, so we still have an hour and 10 minutes to actually get this to work, so that's what I've allocated. So it's making, awesome. I know. <laughs> All right, next we're gonna install something called Homebrew. Now, have you ever, um, all right, so home, Homebrew is what's called the missing package manager for Mac OS. And what that, is, what that means is like, who here is like a car guy, a car person, like really enjoys cars? Sure, so you really enjoy cars. There are things that come shipped 
free, like, like come straight from the factory with a car, things that like car people don't like. So most car people like stick shift cars instead of automatic cars, but everything that comes off the line is an automatic car. Uh, so if you wanted to customize your own versions of things rather than having the factory settings, you have to like basically tell the factory what you want, want to do. And that's essentially what we've got here with Homebrew. Like Mac, when they, when they ship your computer, there's a whole bunch of software in order for the computer to run, but it's all super out of date, just the minimum to, to please everybody. So instead of relying on what they have, we're going to install our own versions of things. Now Homebrew, what it also does is that it manages versions for us. So on your phone, like you can only down, like if you have an iPhone, the only thing you can do is download stuff from the app store and the app store keeps track of different versions for you. So if your, you know, your Gmail is out of date or your Bank of America app is out of date, they keep track of that and they allow you to update all at one time rather than saying, oh, your, your Bank of America thing is out of date, please download it again. Oh, your Gmail is out of date, please download it again. You have, a, you have Homebrew and the Mac app store that basically keep track of versions for you. So I want you to do two things. If you go to your terminal and you type in which brew, this dollar sign right here, if you go into your terminal, you'll see that, this is too small. You'll see that there's this dollar sign here. That's just a sign that says, hey, you're gonna type something at the terminal. If you type in which brew and you get something that looks like this, user local bin brew, then you're all set. Maybe you set it up somewhere, you, you have a, like a, you have a, you know, you've installed something from a tutorial online. If you've got this, you're all set. If you type in which brew and you have nothing, I want you to copy this particular command without the dollar sign and just paste it in there. It's gonna take a little bit of while, a time to install. From there, I want you to run brew update and brew doctor. You're gonna to want to run this pretty much every day, brew update, brew doctor, just to make sure that all of the things that you, uh, all the things you've installed are up to date at all times. So you should download all this stuff install code, run through homebrew, and stop right here. Don't go any further than this. And we'll take about another eight minutes to get through this. Section. All right, this next step right over here is called adjusting the path for homebrew. What this is doing is when I run certain programs, I want it to run from the root path of my user. So it's kind of like saying, um, go to the post office. Go to the post office is kind of, it, it's, it's like which one. So it's, it, if I was here and I said, go to the post office, you as a human being have the context in your brain. It's like, oh, the post office that's closest to here. So you just go to Google, you say post office near me. But if I were just to say that to somebody and I didn't say where, they're gonna say, what do you mean? And that's kind of what we have with all of these, the two things that we download, VS Code and iTerm. If you were to run iTerm, it's, relevant to where you installed it. But because I threw it inside of my applications, I know that I'm running it from my, from my root user every single time. Same thing here, we're about to install a bunch of, uh, we're about to install a bunch of software. We wanna make sure that Homebrew is at the same place as locations. But there's, since there's no like drag and drop functionality, we have to run everything through the command line. So what I want you to do, is I want you to open up iTerm. Again, this dollar sign, you don't want to highlight this. You just, it's just saying that you're going to run this at the command line. I want to highlight this whole thing. I'm recording. I'm recording. I want you to highlight this first line, just this first one, and paste it inside of here. You want to make sure that user local bin comes before user bin, which comes before bin. So as long as it's in this chronological order, with this one coming first, this one coming second, this one coming third, then you're all set to go. If you don't see that, let me know. I'm gonna continue recording. So it seems like most people are good. Um, again, if you are behind in any way, that's okay. Everyone's like downloading a whole bunch of stuff all at one time and it really depends on how fast your computer is. Now, what I want you to do is to install a bunch of software. In order to do that using Homebrew, you're just going to do brew install SQLite. 
So SQLite is a type of SQL database. And by installing it using Homebrew, where it's basically saying, hey, Homebrew, install this for me and keep track of which version I'm on. It's kind of like when you download something from the App Store on your phone. Uh, you're basically saying, hey, App Store, download this for me and keep track if there are any updates. So we're going to install a whole bunch of stuff. We're going to run through brew install SQLite 3, brew install Postgres, and we want to keep Postgres running in the background at all times. So we're going to highlight these next two lines, which basically say, whenever I load up my computer, I want to keep uh, Postgres running in the background. It's a database. I want to keep that running in the background so it's always available for me whenever I need to use it. It doesn't drain a lot of resources. It just keeps it on in the background. The way that we verify that we've installed these things correctly is we type in, after we finish installing, which Postgres and which PSQL. And as long as something like this shows up, you should be good. I'm just going to pause right there. So we're going to say, brew install post, uh, Postgres, brew install SQLite 3. We're going to keep it running in the background by running these two commands in succession. As long as you're able to type in which Postgres, get something like this, which PSQL, and get something like that, you should be good to go. So everything up until this section over here. And I'm going to take pause and just kind of bounce around through. All right, I'm feeling pretty encouraged so far because I'm seeing most people are getting, like having no issues with setup. So I'm going to continue on. Again, uh, we're just going one by one around. So if you cannot, if you don't have what we have, let us know. The next thing I want you to do is to copy this line just to see if Postgres is running in the background. I'm going to copy that line, show it up here. If anything shows up, you're good to go. So I see yours is good to go. Finally, I'm going to create a, a database and just see if everything works. So you're going to do create DB user. Once you do that, you're going to have a, uh, let me see if I can do this, drop DB user. Okay. So create DB user. And if I do psql user, I should be able to enter this particular constant. If you see this, that's great. And you just do backslash q to get out. That's where we're going to pause. So don't go to the Python portion. We're going to install all of that very soon. We're almost finished. We might even get to take lunch a little early. Again, make sure you run this command. If anything shows up, you're good. Then go down to here and create a database just to see if everything works correctly. All right, so we're going to continue on here. Hold on one second, guys. Um, we're, going to we're going to continue on, and we're going to install Python. So Python, like I said, if you think about every single, um, if you think about like all the cars that are like built, you have all the, the factory settings, and not all the factory settings are really, really great. Uh, sorry, Josh, can you hold on one second? Sorry, Josh, can you hold on one second? Sorry. Um, so Python comes built in with Mac, but it's super, super old. It's usually Python 2, which is an, which is an entire version behind Python 3. It's kind of like driving a car without a rear view backup camera, and then all the ones now have backup cameras. Um, so you could download it directly from the website, but we're all developers now, and we're going to use Homebrew. So all you got to do is brew install Python. After you run brew install Python, I want you to do a little something. We're going to create what's called bash profiles. So bash profiles, if you, go, if you look at my, my machine, you'll notice that my, my terminal looks a little bit different than yours. I've got the nice little color. I got, you know, I've got the light, the light green, the lime green. Okay, I, I have colors and I have certain settings on my particular machine. So think of a bash profile this way. So whenever like VIPs travel, it's actually kind of interesting. I had a friend who worked for the Four Seasons and she, the first night she went to, uh, she was at the Four Seasons in Honolulu. She got there and they didn't have enough rooms for her and she works for them. So they said, we're gonna put you up in the presidential suite. Now that suite is $25,000 a night. And they said, we're gonna roll you up a cot. It don't sleep in the bed because the, <laughs> the people who sleep there have very, very specific wants and asks. You can't, like, it cannot be slept in for a certain amount of days. You have to have certain types of sheets. You have to have a certain thread count on those sheets, a certain type of pillow. Like these are very, very wealthy people, right? $25,000 a night kind of, kind of wealthy people. 
So the idea there is that before VIPs show up, they always have a certain number of asks. So it's like when I show up, I want these four things to be there at all times. Um, another example is we, when I was in college, I was in charge of the largest outdoor student run music festival. And I was in charge of the finances. So we got Nelly to go perform for us. I mean, Nelly is kind of old school, but it was still kind of cool at the time. Um, and when Nelly comes onto like the, our campus, he basically says, I want these particular things in my trailer. I want the trailer of this size. I want, he wanted Boston Market and a lot of booths. So we had to get Boston Market and a lot of booths so that when he shows up, there's a specific, uh, like the specific thing he expects from every single place that he goes to. That's how he has regularity. The same thing happens here when you're coding. You're gonna have a bash profile, but this is a lot less sexy to know, but uh, you're gonna have what's called a bash profile. This is a profile that's gonna be loaded up every single time that you open up this particular screen. And what that means is whenever I open it up, instead of seeing the black and white thing that you're seeing right now, you're going to have like nice colors, you're gonna have the version of Python that you expect. So I want you to run brew install Python. And then I want you to run through these commands. So touch bash profile, code bash profile, copy this whole line right there and paste it inside and then source bash profile. You'll, you, know, you will know that you're done, that when you type in Python, it's gonna be version 3.7 point something. So again, we're just gonna to go touch bash profile, code bash profile, paste this particular line of code and then source it. 